working on my 5 inch gauge sterling single. This one's all about taking the engine apart and learning how all the parts fit together. Before I do that though, I'm going to make a very simple support for the front bogey. When I ran the engine on the rolling road the other day, I noticed it wasn't quite level and it was putting uneven pressure on the centre wheel. So the simple answer is to make a support that the first four wheels rest on, that is exactly the same height as the rolling road, which is two inches from the bench. I don't need to go into great detail about how to make this simple piece of wood. You can see very clearly what I'm doing, and I put some glue on the board that I've just cut. I drilled some holes in the board first, of course, and in this clip I'm finally screwing the board to the two pieces of wood. I painted it black just so it didn't look like a rough piece of wood, and here it is in action. The piece of wood supports the two front wheels, and now all the engine's wheels are at the same height. Well, that is a theory, but of course they aren't, because the other two pairs of wheels don't ride on top of the bearings. The driving and trailing wheels are just below two inches, because as you can see, both of these sets of wheels slightly fall into the gap between the two bearings, which is fractionally less than two inches from the bench. Because I didn't build this engine, I really don't know how it's put together. So now is the time to find out. I don't want to find out after it's been painted. And I'm certainly not going to paint a lot of these parts whilst they're fastened to the engine. But to start with, getting this front piece off was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Can you believe it? I'm having to take half of the cylinder bolts out on both sides. And then I also need to take the bottom bolt that's facing the camera and the bottom bolt that's not facing the camera out of the main frame. As you can see, it's currently fouling. By the same token though, the engineering is very good. I wondered how the builder got everything to fit so well, and now I know why. Once I removed this front plate, I refitted the bolts to the cylinder because I will be running the engine with this plate removed, and I didn't want to encourage any leaks to appear on the cylinder covers. I'm currently undoing two bolts that hold in position this very distinctive, uh, what call it what you like, mudguard, double splasher, that fits over the front bogey wheels. Simon at the Steam Workshop has a very beautiful 7.25 inch gauge version of this sterling single, and it's for sale, and for a brief moment in time I thought, should I buy this? But then Simon said, well, if you're thinking of running it round your garden railway with tight curves, forget it, because the splasher at the front doesn't allow too much articulation of the front bogey. But the discussion was purely academic, because there was no way could I possibly afford that engine. Or at least not until I get another 3,000 Patreon subscribers, but that's really not looking likely any time soon, possibly not even in my lifetime. What I'm showing you at the moment are things underneath the engine. These are obviously the eccentrics. The two outer pairs control the valve gear, and the middle eccentric and strap drives the water pump. The builder has had the forethought to drill holes in the two outer eccentric straps to take an Allen key to allow adjustment of the eccentric sheaves using the Allen key to slacken off the grub screw so you can move the position of the eccentric sheaves. But they don't need adjusting anyway, they're very well set as they are. In order to remove the four front bogey wheels, what I need to do is slacken off these lock nuts so I can undo them. They were very tight, but with the barco spanner on one of the lock nuts and a socket on the other, they soon gave way. I'm taking out the entire unit, not just the bogey wheels, I'm taking out the spindle as well. Because I want to see how it's all put together. And the good news is, it's really well made, I've not found anything wrong with this at all. I think this is a good design, a high tensile allen head bolt, which is used to securely hold the pin to the frame stretcher. All of these parts are going to need thoroughly degreasing. Normally to degrease engine parts, I just put them in a tub of cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner in the USA, but that removes paint, and I don't want to remove this paint because it's very well stuck to the metal. So I'm currently looking for a parts washer for the workshop. I quite like the look of the ones that are on stands, so I'll probably buy one of those. So far, I'm very impressed with the engineering quality of this engine. Just look on these splashes. That is over-engineered, I would think, but at least they're not going to break. Now I need to remove the running board, just like I did on the other side. And once again, I'm using my small mirror to see where the nuts are located. But I failed on the front one. There's quite a lot of pieces in the way. The connecting rod and the brake gear really makes it a tight fit. So I found it much easier to put the engine back on its side 
and then I use one of these cheap and cheerful nut spinners to remove the nut from the front part of the running board. So that's one front splasher and two running boards removed. Now I'm going to remove the other front splasher, but it's already loose. Now I have a theory on this. I think this has been done on purpose in order to allow just a little bit more flexibility around a right hand curve. So all I need to do on this side is just remove the back bolt and off it comes. In this clip I'm holding the splasher back in its approximate position and I think I'll be able to fit packing washers behind the splasher brackets to move them out just a fraction, just enough to let the engine go around tighter curves. The trouble is now, without the front wheels, the front of the engine's a bit low. The only thing that's supporting the front of the engine are the two guard irons. So what I need to do here is just lift up the guard irons a little bit with a piece of packing, and now it's running more or less level again. I'm going to experiment a little bit with the painting on this engine. I would like to do some lining, but I've never done it before, so I'll need to practice. And the first job I'm going to do is paint the front splashes. I stopped talking there because I didn't want to interrupt the beautiful sound that the engine makes. As I was saying, I intend to paint the splashes first, because if I don't get these too good, then at least they're not very visible. And the best analogy I can use is that many years ago, when I was about 25 years old, I bought an old house, and it was a bit of a wreck and needed a lot of work doing to it. So the first wall that I plastered was hidden behind some cupboards over the cooker. And it wasn't the best plastering in the world, to be perfectly honest, but nobody knew that other than me. However, as time went on and I plastered the rest of the building, I got pretty good at it, and I'm hoping that this is going to be the same with the paintwork on this locomotive. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.